Hello and welcome back. In this video, we discuss concept 15, forces and symbol trusses. A truss is an engineered structure made with several slender metallic components joined tightly so that the structure can support a load. Typical examples are bridges and roof structure, etc. The picture shows a truss structure used as a bridge. Truss analysis means finding internal forces acting on each element of the structure. A typical uh, schematic of a typical truss structure is shown in this figure, which shows different elements uh, of the structure, such as A, B, B, C, C, D, etc. And also it shows the external load acting on the structure and the, the support reactions. So in this case, a structure is supported at two points, A and E. So truss analysis of this structure means find out the force in element AB, BC, CD, etc. In truss analysis, we use two assumptions. Assumption one is each truss member will act as a two force member either tension or compression. Figure A shows a truss member subjected to external compressive load. You can see the arrows. So this arrow shows that this element is under external compression. So external compression leads to internal tensile load in the member. On the other side, if a truss member is subjected to external tension, so you see the arrows which are pulling this element uh, outward, generate internal compressive load in the structural member. The second assumption is that each member is joined by a smooth pin as indicated. So we are going to neglect the friction in the analysis. Although there are several methods for truss analysis, we are going to discuss the method of joints in this uh, video to find out various forces in the elements. Now consider a simple uh, problem of truss analysis. We have a three member truss as shown in the figure is given which is subjected to an external load of 500 Newton at uh, point B. The distance AB is 2 meters and distance AB, AC is 2 meters. The angle is 45 degrees between AC and BC. Now the question is find the magnitude of force, forces in each member and also uh, state whether the member is in tension or compression. So we're going to use a method of joints to solve this problem. So the first step is to basically start with a joint where you know some known forces. Since B is subjected to a known, the pin, pin at B is subjected to a known 500 Newton force, then we can use this joint for the uh, initial analysis. The free body diagram of the pin at joint B is shown in this figure. The pin is assumed to be in static equilibrium under different forces uh, as indicated. 500 Newton is acting in the I direction and the, the, the element AB is, is providing a force FBA uh, at B and the element BC is providing a force FBC at B. Now the important uh, consideration here is how do we choose the direction of FBC and FBA? Because we know the direction of 500 Newton which is towards uh, positive I direction. Now since there are only three forces uh, in acting at B and the pin joint B is in static equilibrium, we can deduce, logically conclude that since 500 Newton is acting in I direction and FBA is acting in the vertical direction, 
FBC must be opposing 500 Newton. So that's why FBC is in the, uh, to the, to the left, the direction is to the left. Otherwise, this 500 Newton cannot be balanced with uh, any of these forces such as B FBA because FBA is a vertical force. And since FBC is acting upward, uh, the direction of FBC must be downward. So this is the logical conclusion of the directions of other unknown forces FBC and FBA of this joint. Now, in order to find the FBA and FBC, we may have to apply the condition for static equilibrium. Now, we have the free body diagram of pin joint B, where we have three forces, and we know the direction of FBA and FBC, and we know the direction and magnitude of the third force, which is external force 500 Newton. So the condition for static equilibrium is sum of all these forces must be zero. That is vector FBA plus vector FBC plus vector uh, 500 Newton I in the I direction equal to zero. Now we can use FBA as magnitude of vector FBA and FBC as magnitude of vector FBC and then uh, equation 1 can be expressed as uh, as the magnitude and the unit vectors of each forces. For example, uh, in case of FBA, we have FBA the magnitude which is acting in the minus j direction because FBA is acting in the minus j direction. <coughs> and FBC uh, has a minus i component and if it has a, a positive j component. When we resolve FBC, we get FBZ cos 45 in the minus i direction and FBC sin 45 in the j direction and plus 500 Newton in the i direction. So this is our equation 2 which derived from the equation 1. Now we can group i's from the equation and j's so that we get uh, some terms in i plus some terms j equal to 0. Since uh, i and j cannot be zero, these coefficients must be zero. So we get two equations, minus FBC cos 45 plus 500 equal to zero, and minus FBA plus FBC sine 45 equal to zero, from which we can get FBC as 707.1 Newton and FBA as 500 Newton. So essentially, we, we use the, con uh, the condition for static equilibrium and solve the two unknowns from two equations. Now let us bring back the free body diagram of pin joint B, where we show the unknown forces we solved, which is FBC 707.1 Newton and FBA acting in the minus J direction, which is 500 Newton. Uh, we also show uh, the elements A, B, BC and AC in, in this diagram along with the uh, pin joints A and C. So since the member BC is a two force member, two, it has only two force number uh, based on our assumption, uh, the reaction of pin BC will be acting opposite to, uh, opposite to the force FBC uh, at one end of the, one end of uh, the element BC, which is equal in magnitude and a, a reaction of this will be acting since it is in equilibrium this member is in equilibrium the the reaction at the other end must be equal and opposite to the force at this end so it has the same magnitude but opposite direction which will give you a compressive load in the element BC and the magnitude of force within BC is same as if BC we solved from the free body diagram of uh, free body diagram <coughs> analysis of pin joint B. And a similar fashion, uh, since we know FBA and the element is BA is a two force member, uh, the, the action and reaction uh, within the element must be same and must be equal to 500 Newton. And the direction will be dictated by the direction of FBA 
therefore, we can see that the F, the member FBA is under tension. So in order to find the nature of force and the magnitude of force uh, acting in element AC, we may have to uh, do the free body diagram analysis for join C and join A separately, just like we did uh, in case of uh, join B. So here is the um, step two, which is the free body diagram of joint C with uh, one of the known force we solved from the joint B, which is 707.1 Newton acting at an angle 45 degree. Similarly, we also show the free body diagram of joint A here with one force known, uh, which is FBA. Uh, is shown here, which is 500 Newton. Uh, but the other unknown forces, FAC is unknown and RA is unknown. So we're going to solve FAC or FRA uh, and RC from the uh, free body diagram analysis of joint C and A. For pin joint C, we have three forces and we know the direction of all the forces. FCA is acting in the minus I direction and RC is acting in the positive J direction. Uh, we can use the condition for static equilibrium here too, uh, adding all the vectors and separating the I and J components and solve the unknown forces from two equations. So we have two unknowns, two equations situation. So we can solve the unknowns, which is FCA and F and RC uh, from pin joint C, equilibrium condition of pin joint C. Now let us bring back uh, the free body diagram again and we show the unknown force we just solved FCA in this diagram so that we can find the member force in AZ uh, which is uh, now under tension and that information can also be used for finding the uh, support reaction at A. So the free body diagram of support reaction A is shown in this figure. The sum of the forces, three forces must be zero and the only unknown is the reaction at A which is given as minus 500 I minus 500 J Newton which has a magnitude of 707.1 Newton and an angle of 45 degree. And the final answer is an image that indicates the free body diagram of A, B, and C, which are the joints, and the internal forces in member B, A, B, C, and A, C, with, the, with the, its nature, whether it is tension or compression, as indicated in one single diagram, along with the reactions at A and reactions at C. We have two problems uh, to repeat. So one problem is just a repetition of the same problem with the different uh, external force, which is 200 Newton in this case, and an angle 60 degree. Second problem, the external force is acting at an angle 30 degree. Uh, so in both these problems, you follow the same procedure and solve the, uh, the internal forces as well as support reactions at B and C.